Where are you from? Where are you from? The trumpet, jackass. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to Palta Tech. We are reviewing the new Viltrox 56mm f1.4 prime lens for the Fujifilm X-Mount. First off, although Viltrox was kind enough to send us a copy of this lens to test out, just like always, this review is not sponsored by anyone. The Fuji 56mm 1.2 is actually a really good comparison for testing. These two lenses are a lot closer in terms of size and weight, not to mention portability and price. The Viltrox lens is currently priced at $330. This puts it at exactly the same price as the 23mm Viltrox, and about $50 more than the 33mm Viltrox and $70 less than the 85mm Viltrox. Straight out of the box, the first thing you see is an MTF graph and specification document. There's also this, you know, really pretty little Viltrox bag that will not protect the lens much at all. Just saying. And of course, wrapped in the soft white packing material is the lens itself. The lens weighs in at just over 290 grams which is about 100 grams lighter than the Fuji 56 mm f1.2. This is not the lightest Viltrox lens, but it certainly is not the heaviest either. This is a wonderful size and weight if you plan on traveling with a 56 mm prime lens. The construction on this lens is absolutely solid. The focus ring has a slightly looser turn to it, just like the 33 mm did, but it's not quite as firm or tight as the 23 mm. There is a USB port on the bottom of the lens where you can very easily update the firmware by connecting the lens straight to your computer and then dragging and dropping the firmware file right into the lens device itself. For this review, I am using firmware 1.0.7. The all metal lens hood is awesome in terms of feel and durability, and it's much sturdier and easier to put on than the lens hood that comes with the Fuji 56 millimeter. There is no weather sealing on this lens and the manual focus is focused by wire. There are 10 elements of glass contained in nine different groups. The filter size on the front of the lens is 52 millimeters, which means that you can share the same filters with the other Viltrox 23 millimeter and also 33 millimeter lenses. The minimum focus distance on this lens is about 0.6 meters, which is about 1.97 feet. Although on paper, this Viltrox lens has a shorter minimum focus distance than the Fuji, in real life, I didn't notice much of a difference between the two lenses. There are nine rounded aperture blades ranging from f1.4 up to f16. It is a clickless aperture lens, but the aperture ring has a nice firm feel to it when you're turning it. And frankly, I think it's much better than the Fuji 56 millimeter aperture ring, which I actually don't like that much because it's, it's just too easy to turn. In and of itself, and all things considered, the sharpness and color rendering of this lens is wonderful. And for the price of $330, compared with the Fuji 56mm f1.2 at $850, the image quality you get from this lens is amazing. Now, there is some purple fringing at wider apertures, but nothing really stood out as a huge problem to me. There is also some definite lens flaring, more than any other Viltrox lens I tested, and this is definitely something to consider depending upon your framing and your composition. Okay, let's take a look at some photos now. <laughs> this parrot was the first shot I took with this lens when I first put it on the camera. Okay, so this is f1.4. You obviously have a much narrower depth of field here. Have a look at this. You see that? I kind of might have missed focusing on the bug a little bit, but boy, look at that. It nailed that. But what a narrow depth of field you get with f1.4. f2.0 is great for portraits. By the way, these are all straight out of the camera raw files. f2.0 has really nice portrait background isolation. And of course, Bam, nails the focus right there. Here's f4.0, and I love it at f4.0. Check it out, look at how sharp it got it, right there. I am zoomed in all the way, let's go to 2.1. 
Okay, on the left is the Viltrox, on the right is the Fuji. Everything else is the same. And these look really similar. In fact, I'm gonna go two to one. Look at how similar they are. Let's look at the corner at F1.4. The Fuji 56 is slightly sharper at the corner at F1.4. See that right there compared to right there? Okay, looking at F2, there is a little bit of purple fringing on the Viltrox side compared to the Fuji. Let's look at the corner. The Fuji is just a smidgen sharper. I mean, it's just a little bit sharper. Okay, let's look at these at F5.6, zoomed all the way in. Now, this is really interesting. The Viltrox is sharper in the center at F5.6 than the Fuji. Have a look at this. This just looks better. Look at these words right here compared to right here. Look at the word Viltrox lens, look at that. Let's look at one of the corners and they look identical to me. Now at F16, you do see a little bit of better image quality on the Fuji, but I'm being really nitpicky here. I am zoomed in two times, 200%. At F5.6, the Viltrox is sharper and has more contrast than the Fuji. Okay, here's the Viltrox F1.4. I'll zoom in to 100, there I am. And the background has very nice isolation. As we stop down the lens and move down, you can see the background obviously comes more into focus. And obviously this sort of lens, you would never really shoot at F16 anyway. You want to have those wider apertures. Honestly, I think this lens definitely isolates the subject here at F1.4, but I think it looks very good at F2. Even at F2.8, I would shoot it at. Let's compare it to the Fuji 56 now. And as you can see, there is definitely more background isolation and softer bokeh in the back on the Fuji, but it seems to me almost that the impression of subject isolation is better on the Viltrox. Okay, let's compare them both head to head at exactly F1.4. Pretty similar, but I prefer the background on the Viltrox. See, look at that. It's just a softer background. And this is interesting, check it out. Here's the same photo taken at F5.6, right? Between the two lenses. Look at the background difference between the two of them. You see that? Look at that. Autofocus on this lens is very fast. It's much faster than the Fuji 56 millimeter F1.2. I was thrilled with how fast it nailed focus. It doesn't matter whether I set it on face eye auto detect or spot or zone or whatever. It was fast, fast, fast. Have a look at this. Just bam, nails the shot. Look at that right here. And uh, <laughs> do you see that? Oh my God, check this out. I just noticed this. Look at this picture right here. All right, wait, no, not that one, this one, yeah. What I want you to do is I want you to look at this area of the picture. Check it out, okay. Watch this thing right here. Watch, check this out right here. Hit, ready, ready, boom. See it, move from here to here. Look at that, watch, there. And then, dink, landed, landed on the hat. Okay, anyway. Back to the review. So face eye auto detect nailed it. It would just nail it from shot to shot to shot to shot to shot. Just boom, face eye auto detect. Even when the eyes were closed, it just nails it. To test video autofocus, I went ahead and set the camera to the default settings for tracking sensitivity and autofocus speed. Obviously, how you have these settings configured in your camera greatly affects the speed and the accuracy of your video autofocus. I compared this lens against the Fuji F1.2 in exactly the same setup with the same camera and the same settings. What I found was that in every test I ran, the Viltrox outperformed the Fuji 56 millimeter in video. There was less jumping around with the Viltrox, much better face eye auto detect, and significantly faster autofocus. Not only that, but the focus motor on the Viltrox is so much quieter than the focus motor on the Fuji. I then tested to see if there was any exposure stepping when the aperture ring is set to automatic and then you're shooting and panning around to different lighting conditions. Have a look at this footage right here. In this test, 
I had the camera set to a fixed shutter speed and a fixed ISO. The aperture was set to automatic, and as you can see, it jumps up and down depending upon the lighting conditions of the scene. It does not do this if you fix the aperture to a specific set value, set your shutter speed to a set value, and then set your ISO to auto. If your ISO is set to auto and everything else is set to manual, then it doesn't do this. But you know what? That being said, so does the Fuji 56 millimeter. Have a look at this. It does the exact same thing. Perhaps not quite as dramatic of a step, but it's there nevertheless. At this point, it's safe to say that Viltrox has firmly embraced the Fujifilm X-mount system with the 23 millimeter, the 33 millimeter, the 85 millimeter, and now the 56 millimeter focal range prime lens options. If you would like to see any of my earlier reviews on some of these other Viltrox lenses, I will have a link to those reviews in the description down below in this video. You know, when I first heard Viltrox came out with the 85 millimeter and that you had to connect it to a computer to update the firmware, and it seemed like it was sort of hacking into the Fujifilm system, I didn't take Viltrox very seriously. In fact, I made a goofy intro to that video, kind of poking fun of the whole thing. It was a rap video. Um, a lot's changed since then. If you do not own the Fuji 56 millimeter F1.2, then I can tell you with 100% certainty that you are better off getting the Viltrox 56 than you are getting the Fuji 56. And even if they were the same price, I would still get the Viltrox. But for 520 less dollars, the Viltrox 56 is an incredible value. To be clear, this is compared to the Fujifilm F1.2 lens, not the F1.0 that just came out. You know, the so-called the one lens that just came out recently. The bottom line, I don't know. I wasn't able to test that lens and I don't have a spare $1,500 laying around to drop on a lens for this review. I think that for a lot of photographers, particularly those entering into the Fujifilm X-mount camera system for the very first time, think about this. For the price of the new Fuji 50 millimeter F 1.0 at $1,500, you can actually purchase both the Viltrox 56 millimeter that I just reviewed and the Viltrox 23 millimeter, which is also an amazing lens. And you would have a few hundred dollars left over to pick up a few more SD cards or to, I don't know, donate to the Powell Detect channel. From a value perspective, this is an excellent lens. Yes, there are some purple fringing issues and lens flaring that I discussed and the way at which setting the aperture to automatic will cause exposure jumps in your video footage. It's not perfect, but it's darn close. And it's now fully replaced my Fuji 56 millimeter just for the portability and focus speed alone. I'm gonna give the Viltrox 56 millimeter lens an A. I will have sample RAW files taken with this lens for you to download in the description of this video. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please be sure to give it the like and subscribe, and have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next week. Take care. Fast as possible, this is the Viltrox 56 millimeter. Viltrox 56. Oh, you gotta be quiet. I gotta listen for the lens. Stop moving. Okay, shh.